students today we will discuss about the pigree farming how we manage the pig management because pig farming has a special significance and plays an important role in improving the socio economic status of a sizable section of the pigar community the management of the pig is little bit different difficult from the other species so one by one we will see how can we manage the pig farming for the benefit of farmers and how can we manage a pig farm efficiently so here we will see the data about the pigries in india as well as in jharkhand total pig population in the country is 9.06 million as per the census 2019 and uh, 79.03 percent of the population is uh, still indigenous so this is one of our drawback because still we are lagging behind in the genetic groups the population of indigenous pig is still higher because of the lack of awareness among the farmers in india 70% pig population is reared under the traditional small holder low input demand driven production system because most of the pigries that's why 70% of the pig population is indigenous because still most of the pigry is in hand of the our poor farmers in the rural areas improved pig husbandry program and pig waste integrated farming system have significantly contributed in the poverty alleviation strategies of the government population of pig even the population of indigenous pig is higher but the population of pig in some states is in increasing trend and it has increased with 32.69% in jharkhand 29.99% in meghalaya 28.30% in assam 20.01% in chatisgarh and 19.26% in mizoram as compared to the previous livestock census so fastest growth during the last 5 years fastest growth in pig population is observed in the jharkhand thereafter in meghalaya and assam and jharkhand is the second most populous states jharkhand is the second most pig populous state in the country these are the some photographs you see the pig reared by our poor farmers our small land holding farmers in the rural areas they are doing pigry in a scientific way gradually gradually you will see in the photographs gradually the farmers replacing their low production low productive indigenous pigs with our improved pig varieties again ladies farmers are also involved in the pigries because the management cost keeping cost disease aspect the production cost is little bit less as compared to the other species so regarding first most important thing in the pig farming is the breed because breed is the most important aspect which affects the profit profitability of the pigries so as per the government of india few recommended breeds are there for rearing to different states suppose in northern india large white yorkshire their crosses landres and or their crosses is being recommended in northeastern india large white yorkshire 
especially for the Mizoram and Tripura. Triple cross with Duroc, large cross black, large black cross is recommended in northeast, northeastern India. And in eastern India, Hampshire cross and Tambert cross, especially Jharsuk, Tambert cross that is Jharsuk which is being developed in our Birsa Agriculture University is recommended for the rearing for the rearing to the farmers of the Jharkhand, Bihar. In Central India, Landris Cross, Large White Cross is recommended. In Southern India, Large White Cross, Triple Cross with Duroc, Duroc is recommended. In Western India, Large White Cross is recommended. So in most of the parts, Large White Cross Duroc is recommended for rearing for the farmers. But in our Jharkhand, for our Jharkhand, the best breed is the Jharsuk Tambert Cross, which is being developed in Birsa Agriculture University. And it is also being popular in other neighboring states. So these are the, some photographs of these exotic pigs. Large white Yorkshire, Tambert, Duroc. Russian Charmukha, large black. So these are the photographs. You may also see these uh, photographs of our farm. Large white Yorkshire pig, Tambert, Hampshire, Russian Charmukha. So these are the breeds which is being maintained at the farms of Virsa Agriculture University. And if we talk about the rearing system, this is another aspect. Uh, uh, pig rearing system in India and in different. There are three or four types of we may say the free range, semi-intensive, intensive or in integrated way, we may rear the pig successfully. So, first is the free range system. Free range system is most popular and because 70 percent of the population of pig in India is of indigenous type, reared by the rural poor people. So, Mostly they maintain the pigs under the free range system. It is a traditional system and mostly indigenous pig is being reared under this system. Productivity is of course generally low and the potential is also limited. Significant contribution to livestock livelihood of poor people. Still the farmers rearing the pigs, indigenous pigs in rural areas but still these pigs are act as a very important role for the livelihood of the poor people because indigenous pigs also have some advantages mostly in the rural areas the farmers rear indigenous pigs with zero input system. They mainly maintained under free range, they mainly maintained on the grazing, whatever the feed available, best feed waste available, leaves, grasses, whatever it is, they are providing. Or peoples or the uh, pigs maintain their body on the by the grazing. So this is the we may also call this free range system as zero input system. Still, the performance, pig shows their performance, growth is there, growth is of course less, production is less, but still, still, they are providing, they are advantageous for the farmers without any input they are getting something so it is also very popular and second is the semi intensive means confined within a large area within a large area pigs are there they are moving here and there and they are also accommodation facility is being provided for the farmers it is popular in the sub urban areas where the grazing facility is less Mainly fattening pigs are reared under this system, crossbred or indigenous, both the pigs reared under this system. Productivity is little bit better as compared to the our free range or indigenous pig and rearing cost is 
higher than the free range but little west little bit less than the indigenous system intensive system third is the intensive system of the pig management where pigs are completely kept in a enclosure adapted by farmers with a sense for improved pig production the farmers want to rear the pigs in complete scientific way they used to rear under this system mainly this system intensive system of management is followed in the urban areas and maintained on commercial feed or kitchen waste and uh, under this system recommended breeds are cross breed or the exotic breed but not the indigenous what is the importance of the pig farming pig is the species which is having so many advantages potential so many potential they are having to contribute to the farmers because the sum of the important potential is the faster economic returns to the farmers as compared to the other species better feed conversion efficiency feed conversion efficiency is the 3 to 3.5 but the feed conversion efficiency for the other species is the higher and early maturity and short generation interval they mature in 7 to 8 months and the generation interval is also very short disease resistance is the most important aspect because the most of the farmers they are afraid because of the disease occurrence in the livestock but in case of pig the pigs are disease resistance only a few diseases are there and if vaccinate against these diseases then there is no chances of other disease to the pigs so there is very less chances of mortality to the pigs low startup cost is also if somebody wants to start the pig farming the starting cost is also very less investment is less potential to ensure nutritional and economic security easily integrated with the series of other farming system they the pigry is very good suitable with the agriculture with the fisheries with the duckries so these are the importance of the pig farming another is the if we are talking about the integration so pig cum duck cum fish cum agriculture farming is very suitable very good model of the pigry farmers which have access to fish pond if they are having the fish pond they may use the excreta of pig to the pond for the fisheries and they may use this water for the agriculture because this become a very good fertilizer so fish pond can be fertilized with pig manure and algae are produced which can be utilized by the fish and the duck so if somebody ask why do you want to raise pig then we may clearly told that efficient converter of the concentrate into meat quick and net return because only in 8 to 10 months it is the marketable is rapid expansion of enterprise than the cattle and because of the every time they are producing 8 to 12 piglets so there is very rapid expansion of the enterprise relatively less investment on equipment and said more prolific and it produces 2 liters per year and in 1 liter 8 to 12 piglets means in 1 year one female pig can produce 16 to 24 piglets 
highest fat storage ability and in the rural areas there is huge demand of the fat of the pig fatty meat because uh, source of energy efficient conversion of many by products into feed into pork it is efficient converter of many various by products suppose agriculture by product factory by products other food industry by products they use efficiently and they easily converted into the meat feed conversion efficiency is better in pig as compared to other livestock they means they need less quantity of feed to gain 1 kg of body weight pig require less roughages and hence a small acreage of pasture for growing and fattening pigs the farmers having the low land capacity because this is the uh, major issues in india nowadays the land holding capacity of farmers is decreasing so if the farmers having low land holding capacity they easily rear the pigs because green grasses or grazing is not so much required for doing the piggery requirement of labor is also low because pigs are adapted to both self feeding and as well as full feeding fluctuations in price of market of pig meat is very less during the year in case of poultry there is huge fluctuation in the price of the market so farmers sometimes they are benefited some are sometimes they were in loss so this type of situation is not comes for the pig higher dressing percentage because the dressing percentage means the meat edible meats we are getting from the pigs is called dressing percentage suppose dressing percentage 75 to 80 means 100 kg of pigs if we slaughter then we will get the 75 to 80 kg of the edible portion of the meat which is very less in case of poultry approx 60% and of course also in goat 50 to 55% non recurring expenses is also less major cost is in feed other non recurring expenditure is very less non recurring means the equipment housing its a cost is less and pig can utilize very well the kitchen garbage and leftover food articles of the other livestock the food not suitable for the cattle for goat for poultry the pig can utilize that food easily for their growth and productive performance pig skin is also used in leather industries for leather goods more meat can be produced from pigs per unit of time and cost pork has higher energy due to higher fat content and slightly lower water com content as compared to the other meat or meat products initial in investment in setting up piggery is very low pig manure pig manure of course it's the very useful or invaluable fertilizer for the field you may utilize directly to the fields more flexibility and expansion ability of the enterprise due to more prolific and quick growing animals one farmer suppose rearing the two female pigs even within one year or two years the amount or quantity of the animals become 50 or 60 because of it's a more prolific the producing reproductive ability is much much higher and uh, source of high value animal protein animal protein source is also very higher so we already discussed about the breeds of the pig among the breeds we discussed the tamworth cross that is zarsub as we developed in the birsa agriculture university in jharkhand and it's a very very popular among the farmers so these are the few characteristic features of the jharsuk pigs color is completely black skin is lustrous faster growth 
as compared to the indigenous. Indigenous growth is 30 kg in one year. It is approx 90 to 100 kg, three times more. Better reproductive efficiency, if we compare with the desi, reproductive efficiency in desi is only three to four or five piglets in one liter. It is in our jharsuk, it is eight to 12. So, better feed conversion, it's also very good as compared to indigenous feed conversion is five to six, but it, it is 3.5 approx in case of the our jharsuk. Better disease resistance, better adaptability, because it is Jharsuk pig is developed by the cross with the indigenous pig, 50% indigenous, 50% exotic. So, it is very, very good adaptability, very, very adaptable, very, very adaptable to our environment system, our rural areas because still the Jharsu pig is having 50% indigenous genetic groups. Economic returns, if we compare it with the indigenous, it is five to six times economical as compared to the, five to six times economical as compared to the indigenous pigs reared in the rural areas by the, our poor farmers under the extensive system. So this is the photographs, you see the number of piglets of the Jharsuk pig. You must, you just see the photographs of Jharsuk pig. It is developed in our Birsa Agriculture University. So if we talk about the management practices, if we talk about the management practices, so these are the important issues like breeding, feeding, herd management, housing, disease control, marketing. So these are the things we should follow scientifically to have a very good stock to run the farm efficiently and economically. First is the breeding management factors affecting the selection of breed. We have to select the suitable breeds because breed is the pillar of our farm. If breed is not good, then their production, their reproduction will not be up to the mark. So, first of all, we have to select the good quality of the breed. So, these are the factors affecting selection of breeds, ability of good breeding stock, prolificacy, they should be very prolific, means highly producing, growth ability, better growth performance should be there, temperament is also very, very important. It should be docile. Carcass quality is, should be good, not so fatty, not very less fat. So medium quality of the fat should be there and meat should be there. Efficient feed conversion. It should be, breed should be like that. Consume less and gain more. So there must be efficient feed conversion. Nicking ability means where that animal should be very, very caring milking ability should be good so that all the piglets can survive well and farmers will get the good return. Market demand, disease resistance. Market demand should also be there like in Jharkhand. If we talk about the market of Jharkhand, the liking, first liking is the black color pig. So, Char soup is very, very suitable for that. Disease resistance should be there. If we rear the exotic pigs, if disease occurrence is more, then in that situation, it's very difficult to rear. So we must select the breed of pig. We must select the breed, breed of pig that are very, 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 very disease resistance. They must resist our the environmental situation and they must be very much adaptable. These are the factors for selection of the breeding stock. If we, going to, we are going to select the breeding stock, then we must see size of litter, it must be 8, means they must produce minimum 8 piglets in one farrowing. Strength and vigor of the litters, 
the size of piglets, weight of piglet is, should not be less, it should be good, more than 1 kg and should be hardy. Milking ability of the mother, sometimes if the mother is poor milker, in that situation the survival of the piglets become difficult, growth of the piglets become difficult. So we must also see that the uh, milking ability of the females, temperament, it must be docile, it must not be so much aggressive, gain and feed efficiency of progeny. What is the feed efficiency? We already discussed fertility, free from defect and winning weight of litter in gilt should be 80 kg and for so in 100 kg. Means suppose 8 piglets are there and the gilt is the mature female which has not yet farrowed that is called gilt. Means first time the female female pig is uh, farrowing takes place then weight of the total piglet that is called litter weight should be 80 kg and in case of saw which has already been farrowed the weight should be 100 kg. So breeding systems if we talk about the breeding system it also affect the productivity or the performance of the pigs. These are the inbreeding, outbreeding, outcrossing and crossbreeding. In breeding, normally it is not being followed in the farm. In breeding should be avoided. Out breeding means mating of unrelated animal. This system gives good result with performance of pigs. Out crossing means mating of unrelated animal of the same breed. Out crossing and cross breeding means it is common method of commercial swine production. It involves mating of animal between two different breeds. So, merits of the merits of the crossbreeding is the or uh, merits of the following good breeding system. It is fewer embryonic loss, mortality will be less. Increase in litter size, number of piglets will be more per litter. Uniform birth weight and winning weight, greater resistance to the environment system, environmental stress, increase in growth rate, early age of maturity, increases livelihood, li liability of pigs and high vigors, regularity in breeding, there must not be gap, or more time gap, it should be regular. Increased efficiency of feed conversion, mothering ability and higher milk production, cross breed saw, wean, large litter and more weight at winning. So if we follow the proper breeding system, whether it is out crossing, whether it is cross breeding, so we will definitely we will have a good result in terms of the their growth, in terms of the their reproduction in terms of their milking ability, in terms of caring of the piglets. So, similarly, boar, keeping boar in the farm is also affects the productivity or production performance of the next generation animals. Boar should be true to breed. Masculine appearance, long deep body, a smooth soldiers and strong legs, sound health and performance record, no cryptorchid means both the testicles should be intact, it should be, care should be taken, age should be 1.5 to 2 years, only fertile board should be selected and it should not be so bulky or so over fat condition should not be there and male should be very active. Similarly, if we going to select a saw, saw must be from the litter whose litter size and weight at worth and winning weight is maximum, have minimum back fat thickness. So, back fat thickness we measure with the ultrasonography machines are there. So 
must have well developed udder 12 teats should be there minimum 6 pair teats is important which is indicative of the higher reproductive performance of the saw teat of the saw should be free from abdom abdominal de abnormal defect must have deep body select the saw already bred at least once age of bred saw must be 2 to 3 years saw must produce young ones every year saw should have mothering ability and must be ready to another ready for another rebreeding at the end of lactation means regular breeding should be followed this type of saw should be selected and we must uh, follow the their history pedigree through the pedigree we have to select the saw or boar if the performance of their parents is good then from that only we must select the females or males for the breeding purpose these are the normal reproductive guidelines age at puberty is 8 to 9 months breeding age of guilt guilt means the females not eight farrowed after farrowing she become a saw till 10 to 12 months breeding weight of guilt 90 to 100 kg breeding age of boar 18 to 24 months number of saw per boar is 10 heat cycle is average 21 days heat period 2 to 3 days mating time in case of guilt must be inseminate or allow uh, for the mating first day of the heat in saw second day of onset of heat number of services per conception required is two at interval of 14 hours gestation period average 114 days and suckling period is 42 to 56 days average litter size number of piglets at the time of birth is 8 to 12 at winning 7 to 10 because 10 or 10 percent mortality we are considered and rest period is 45 days after winning 45 days we should provide rest to the females then allow for the breeding occurrence of heat after winning 2 to 10 days this is fertile heat period of matting 15 days after winning semen normally ejaculate is 200 to 300 ml from the board average number of sperm 1 lakhs per cubic millimeter average age of castrate peak 3 to 4 average age of castration to peaks is 3 to 4 weeks or 4 to 6 weeks we are also considered marketing age for fattening 8 to 10 months marketing weight 80 to 90 kg farrowing interval 6 months saw can breed up to 8 to 10 years average life of saw is 6 liters so management of breeding of saw is the first pig the most advantageous feature or economic feature of the pig is the their piglets so we have to manage the female pig so that we can get the large number of the piglets in one following or large litter size at the time of birth so for this we are following the flushing flushing means feeding guilt and so liberally to increase energy intake 10 to 15 days prior to matting is called flushing 10 to 15 days prior to matting we are provide extra ration energy ration to the females to get more number of piglets along with this leguminous hay copy lucerne bersim should be provided extra grains should be provided and multivitamins injection we may also provide for the flushing so that we can we will get the more number of liters advantage of flushing is improvement in physical condition of female prompt post winning stress shows prominent heat symptoms increase evolution rate good litter size shortens period between winning to 
successful conception, more uniform litter size, high number of piglets born, minimum minimize embryonic losses. This was, so we must advise the farmers to follow the flushing. Second is the after flushing, female comes in heat. So we have to detect the females in heat in time so that we may allow the males or inseminate the females in suitable time so that we can get the successful conception. So we may detect the females in heat by the following symptoms, vulva, swelling and redness, vaginal discharge, frequent urination, reduced appetite, mounting behavior. Females starts mounting to other females or males, immobility when normal manual pressure is applied on the back region. If on back region if we put pressure, so female will not move away, they just keep quiet. That is the indicative of the females in heat, Restle restlessness, excitement, peculiar grunting sound, erection of ears when pressure applied on the back. So these are the symptoms of the heat in case of the female pigs. 